I've been using a lot of this, uh, this vinyl spackling to mix it with paint. And it's kind of got all these crushed little bits and pieces of, of stone. And I really like how it makes the paint um, much more matte when it dries. And it makes it really sandable. You can start seeing after you sand it, all the crystals get kind of buffed. It makes a really nice iridescent effect. While sitting around, I almost considered these were sort of stand-ins for these boats that were floating in the boat yard. And then the light would hit it, and you see the spectrum kind of come through glass every once in a while, which is pretty cool. There's a dessert shop in town that I like going by and looking at their desserts in the window. Sometimes I just think about making abstract versions of desserts. I usually tend to try to pull the tape quick. I don't like it to set up too much. And I manage to make less mistakes then. Because I remember the, the layering of tape. Well, the blue tape can bend better, and it they build it now in with, what does it say, edge lock, which helps it from bleeding a little bit, but it's expensive, so I'd rather use the cheap tape to make sure I don't get paint on the areas I don't want, but use the expensive tape. One of my goals is not to get as much paint on my clothes as I used to, which never works. And it just keeps building like that. Yeah. So. yeah, because there's so much plaster in the paint, it makes it easier to, uh, to sand it down. and almost, you get rid of any of the lines from when we were doing the palette knife, and it almost shines up the, uh, the crystals in the plaster. All that stuff gets polished out when you sand, so it's all the gypsum and mica flakes in the paint. Not in there, because that's just a pure acrylic, but I like that it can stop and then start. Yeah, yeah, sparkles too, no sparkles. These, like the cube was made first, then I started taking chunks out of the cube and then projecting things from the cube. But yeah, that's all the mica and gypsum. So when I started with these, it kind of had the, this ribboning of kind of obnoxious colors. I didn't like the combinations that much, but the intention was more to uh, completely cover it with that mixture of plaster and more of a, um, which one did I use? I used like the green pearl. So mix those together, both something that's completely uh, transparent. These things kind of do the same thing as the pleasure cubes, that they're supposed to be these suspended shapes.
these are the ones I was thinking of, like while I'm making these shapes, I'm trying to think uh, for no other reason than to have fun. How could you fit a cat inside that box? That's why nothing's really straight or level. Keep going. Keep going. It's an orange lobster trap. So since I moved here to Catalina, I've noticed how everything is getting stacked. In my studio space, I'm in a, a stacked container, and I look out my, my, my window or my door, and lobster uh, cages are stacked, and other containers are stacked. Uh, on the other window, I look at boats that are stacked. And I kind of find that everything I'm doing here is, is stacked, so it's really made, <laughs> made a shift in the paintings because I find that my paintings are either stacking or floating or hovering in some way. So in the paintings, everything starts out with a smaller painting to move into a medium sized to move into larger. So I had gone through 24 paintings where I was basically trying to take in everything I could about being here specifically. And this cube kept coming back and the stacking of cubes. And this is actually one that was inspired by that dessert at, at a bakery, but it's still it's, it's, it's cube form and layers and layers of things on top of each other. And the same thing in here, you know, just everything keeps stacking. It's either stacked on the island or it's floating. It's kind of you're one, of two, one of two options. You know, and for quite some time, the boats aren't, it's not winter yet, so a lot of the boats get pulled out of the water to do work, but you'll start noticing in the next couple months, more and more boats get brought into the boatyard and put up and stacked and sort of, it's great to look at the ocean, it's great to, to be so close, but I really like looking at all these boats getting repairs. They're great colors. They've been sort of uh, bleached out by the sun, so they're not perfect blue anymore. They're sort of a, a washed out blue, and a lot of that just keeps inspiring the color palette. You've got uh, shapes and forms and just general characters that you're meeting in the boatyard and telling stories and trying to turn that into some sort of abstract form. But it's in the boats, just like the color of the boats and the sanding and just these things sitting here waiting for something to happen. It's not so bad, you know? 